I'll be trying to explain the anatomy of uh, brachial plexus. So let's begin. So to begin understanding the brachial plexus, first we must we must understand or we must learn the terms which are very important to understand this. First word comes is the plexus. Plexus in general terms means the collection of nerves. But when we consider the plexus formed around the spinal segments, then plexus means the collection of ventral rami of spinal segments. Okay, rami is the term used for is a term of word used for branches. So the definition of brachial plexus will be the plexus formed by the ventral rami of cervical five, six, seven, eight, and thoracic one spinal segments. This collection is called the brachial plexus. Now, uh, sometimes, uh, um, uh, um, actually, there are two types of brachial plexus we can say depending upon its fixation. Uh, first is the prefixation, prefixed brachial plexus. In this type, the contribution from C4 spinal segment is more, and contribution from that of C5 spinal segment is reduced. Whereas the contribution of T1, that is thoracic one, is lost, that is absent. Uh, this is called the prefixed brachial plexus, and another is postfixed brachial plexus. In this postfixed brachial plexus, the contribution from C4 is absent. Contribution from C5 is there. Contribution from T1, that is thoracic one, is less, but contribution from T2 is induced. This type is called the postfixed brachial plexus. These uh, roots, these. Uh, Spinal segments that is C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 are called the roots of brachial plexus. That is the point from where the brachial plexus originates. Uh, this, is, this is the first component of brachial plexus. Now comes the second component that is the trunk. These trunks originate from the roots. Uh, there are three trunks, upper trunk, middle trunk and the lower trunk. Upper trunk is formed by the fusion of uh, C5 and C6 segment that is C5 and C6 spinal segment or C5 and C6 roots join to form the upper trunk. The C7 root continues as the middle trunk and the lower trunk is formed by the C8 and T1 spinal segment that is C8 and T1 roots of the brachial plexus. Now these trunks, uh, each trunk has two divisions that is one anterior division and one posterior division. Posterior means behind and anterior means front you might already know. So all these three trunks have two two divisions each that is anterior and posterior division. Now the posterior divisions of all these three trunks that is um, upper trunk, middle trunk and lower trunk. All these three trunks uh, posterior division join to form the posterior cord. Okay cord is the uh, cord is now the third part or third component of brachial plexus and the anterior divisions left out of upper trunk and middle trunk join to form the lateral cord and the anterior division of uh, lower trunk that is the anterior division of lower, con lower trunk continues uh, independently or it continues directly as uh, the medial cord that is the anterior division of lower trunk directly forms the medial cord. Uh, here is a diagram I have made that is the brachial plexus okay in a very easy way I am trying to explain it so these are the roots that is C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 these are the roots okay now C5 and C6 join join together to form the upper trunk C5, C6 join to form the upper trunk C7 continues as the middle trunk and C8 and T1 join to form the lower trunk. Now, each trunk, that is upper trunk here I have shown, has two divisions, anterior division, posterior division. Similarly, middle trunk and lower trunk. These posterior divisions, you can see, these posterior divisions of upper, middle and lower trunk combine to form the posterior cord. Okay, This is the posterior cord. And anterior division of lateral cord continues as the uh, anterior division of lateral cord and the anterior division of middle cord trying to form the lateral cord and the medial division is directly continuation of uh, medial tr uh, cord is directly the continuation of anterior division of lower trunk okay now the last component of the brachial plexus that is the branches now uh, there is an easy way to learn this that is a uh, by using the mnemonics so let's just learn that lateral cord lateral cord gives rise to three branches okay 
lateral cord gives rise to three branches that is in uh, short forms or mnemonic we can say LLM okay now lateral L, L means lateral pectoral nerve another L means lateral root of median nerve this is very important and M means musculocutaneous nerve so these are the three branches of lateral cord and in the post uh, and in the now no, we must first understand the middle cord so posterior cord will be easy after that in middle cord that is M4U okay M4U is the mnemonic for middle cord branches now first is the medial cutaneous nerve of arm then medial cutaneous nerve of forearm then medial pectoral nerve and then the ulnar nerve okay now this ulnar this ulnar ter term this ulnar term is the is itself a mnemonic for the branches of posterior cord okay this ulnar is itself a mnemonic for branches of posterior cord so the branches of posterior cord now we can say ulnar okay u for upper subscapular l for lower subscapular then n for nerve to latissimus dorsi which is also called thoracodorsal nerve and then a for axillary nerve and r for radial nerve radial nerve this is important as this is the largest branch this is the radial nerve is the largest branch of brachial plexus so this is important these uh, radial nerve and axillary nerve are two important branches of posterior cord of brachial plexus okay now these roots divisions cords branches uh, that is roots trunk division cord branches all these uh, have some relation with the clav clavicle and this is important for MCQ point of view so uh, these roots and trunk are supraclavicular okay that is they are above the clavicle in the neck region roots and trunk and the divisions are retroclavicular that is they are they are behind the clavicle the divisions are behind the clavicle and the cords and branches are uh, infraclavicular that is uh, the cords and branches are below the clavicle there are two branches that uh, two branches that arise from the upper trunk that is the suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius and uh, there are also branches arising from the roots of brachial plexus one is the dorsal scapular nerve that arises from the c5 spinal segment uh, another is the long thoracic nerve that arises from the c5 c6 uh, c7 sometimes of segments of the spinal segments okay cervical segments 5 6 7 and uh, three other uh, three other group of nerves are also arise from the uh, roots that is one is the scalenae group of muscles another is the nerve to longus, uh, longus coli and third is the part of phrenic nerve uh, these are these all are the branches of uh, <coughs> brachial plexus of different parts that is main branches arise from the lateral cord and other branches also arise from the trunk and uh, these roots okay now the important part of brachial plexus that is the applied part applied anatomy what is the applied part of brachial plexus first condition that may arise is uh, the herbs paralysis that is also called the policeman's stiff hand or potter's stiff hand or waiter's stiff hand uh, this uh, this deformity or this uh, paralysis or this disease arises due to the injury uh, of injury in the upper trunk of brachial plexus okay there is a point in brachial plexus there is a point along the uh, around the upper trunk in the brachial plexus that is called the herbs point it is formed by six parts okay now let me just show in the diagram i have shown this is the herbs point okay this this circle is the herbs point formed by the c5 spinal segment C6 spinal segment, upper trunk, branches of the upper trunk, and anterior and posterior divisions of, of the upper trunk. This is the herbs point. Any injury to this point, any injury to the herbs point will cause the herbs paralysis. Okay. Uh, this injury might be due to the uh, birth injury. Sometimes during the birth, uh, there is a outstretch there or increase between the angle of head and neck and this may lead to this condition or generally in the young age fall on the shoulder from while playing or something uh, leads to this type this uh, paralysis and uh, the deformity that is caused is the uh, hand is adducted alongside the body that is close to the body and medially rotated the forearm is extended 
uh, and the hand is pronated okay this uh, this type of uh, deformity is uh, uh, occurs in the herbs paralysis another disease that may another deformity that may occur due to the injury to brachial plexus is the comkes paralysis the spelling says k l u m p k e apostrophe s but pronounced as comkes paralysis and uh, this is the disease this is the uh, deformity or paralysis caused when there is an injury to the lower trunk of brachial plexus lower trunk that is c8 and t1 sometimes c7 also is involved and uh, uh, um, okay in this uh, the causes are no, normally same as that of herbs paralysis the main cause is the birth uh, during the birth that is the type of uh, method used by the doctors that is a forceps delivery forceps delivery in some in, in that forceps delivery there is an, a stretch between the uh, upper limb that between the upper limb and the neck and this might lead to the injury to the lower trunk and this causes the comkes paralysis and the other is fall on the out stretched hand that is sometimes when you just fall from the fall from some height and then attempt to ca attempt to catch something or just by out, out stretching your hand during fall in the accidents also it might occur so this causes the comkes paralysis and the deformity that is caused is uh, claw hand claw hand that is uh, claw hand this might be complete claw hand that is all the fingers are flexed it might be partial also that is two fingers or three fingers are flexed and uh, there is an autonomous sign of this uh, paralysis also that is called the horner's syndrome and the horner's syndrome is characterized by the first is the actually there is a mnemonic also for this that is the word horner itself okay now h for hypohydrosis o for opening of eyelid is lost that is ptosis occurs or drooping of the eyelid occurs and then n uh, then r r that is uh, argyle robertson pupil that is the re retracted pupil or sunken pupil okay say and uh, constricted pupil actually and then narrowing of the palpebral fissure then uh, e uh, elevation of the um, up, elevation of the lower eyelid is lost and then uh, r that is retraction of uh, eyeball or sunken eyeball so this is the horner syndrome is uh, autonomous sign of comkes uh, paralysis and this occurs when there is an injury to the sympathetic uh, nerves or sympathetic fibers of t1 spinal segment specifically t1 spinal segment when gets injured major injury to the t1 spinal segment or sympathetic nerves of t1 spinal segment leads to this autonomous sign of comkes uh, paralysis that is the horner syndrome uh, so this was all about brachial plexus and uh, uh, this was my sincere attempt to explain the brachial plexus in a very easy way and very easy to understand memorized way and uh, this all had been possible because of my teacher only uh, he is uh, my sir dr s n kazi uh, all this had been taught to me by himself all these mnemonics way to explain way to learn has been taught to me by him so all credit goes to dr kazi and uh, hope you all had liked this video um, give it a thumbs up if you like or just if you don't like it and uh, subscribe to my channel hope to see you back okay bye bye take care